Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. And yourself? I'm good. Um, first of all, my question would be, tell us about your childhood, first of all. Oh, well, my childhood, I'm just like a very shy person, very reserved. I like to be on my own. And um, yeah, I don't really talk much, but I'm also an athlete. I play Nepal for the Western Province, and um, I play indoor and outdoor Nepal, and I'm a law student, and my life has just really been centered around sports, really. So were you a musician at the point that you become a beauty pageant owner? No, I used to do it for fun. I remember I did it in Bambi when I was four years old. I did it in my primary school, Goodwood Park, and I also did it in my high school as well. So it wasn't really something I took seriously. I just really wanted to have fun with it. And I only took it seriously in 2017 when I saw Demi Lee won Miss Universe, and that's when I wanted to pursue Miss Universe. Okay, so how far has it been for you so far? It's been one hectic. <laughs> journey but I'm really grateful for everything and I'm also happy about the outcome. Okay so with the circumstances that happened in South Africa, um, were you expecting that you will come to Nigeria and represent Nigeria in the universe? Um, I feel like I had a fair share with each and every one that competed in the competition. I actually when I came here I felt like oh my word there was really tough competition here but I also felt like I was capable enough, so I just had to trust myself and believe in myself. Okay, so talking about um, capability, yeah, what do you think about the social media backlash that came when you were, it was announced that you were coming to partake in the competition with other girls in Nigeria? I mean, it was expected because I already was facing backlash in South Africa, so I already knew that me accepting this invitation was going to be like another big thing. But um, I don't think I still feel those emotions anymore because I had to really put that to bed. But um, it was also a very traumatic one as well because I felt like every single thing that I was still trying to do, I felt like I was not doing anything right because a lot of people were saying a lot of things that made me feel like, oh, should I do it, shouldn't I, should I doubt myself? And um, I am really glad that I never listened to social media and I just really followed what was in my heart. Okay, so I know that you might have had plans to come to Nigeria and be in the near future, but coming at this time, was that part of the plan? No, it was not part of the plan. I remember in the beginning of the year, I was like, I need to go to Nigeria. I haven't been to Nigeria. I don't know how and when, but I need to go this year. And God said, I'm going to show you how. <laughs> and I'm here. Okay, so has it been staying in Nigeria so far? I'm sure you've eaten your love price many times. It it's been amazing. I actually missed it when I went to Mexico. I literally called my aunt and I was like, where can I get jollof rice in Mexico because I'm so hungry. Um, Nigeria has been a blessing for me since the moment I arrived. It's been good things after good things after good things. And I just made history for Nigeria, so I, I know it's only better after this. So, yes. So tell us about your experience um, at the world stage. Oh, that was really tough. It was so tough. I remember I was like, oh, I can't do this anymore. I really need to go home. But I still had this thing of you can do it. Like, this is something you've been wanting. The main goal was actually for me to just walk the stage. I was sick on the 10th of November after we went for the opening shoot. And um, on the 14th of November was the prelims. And they told me that you have to choose to go to the hospital and not participate. And I was like, what? After all the things I've been through, you're telling me that I need to go to the hospital? I was like, no, let me rather die on stage. <laughs> I really need to walk the stage. And it's been something I really wanted. So I'm really glad that I got to get this experience and this opportunity as well. And of course, it came second. Yes, and I came second, which is still a shocker for me because I did not expect that I would be this, the first runner-up of Miss Universe 2024. Uh, many of us expected that you actually win this competition, yes. <laughs> so in, in all of this now, how does this make you feel that you have achieved a whole lot in a short period of time? It just really proves that um, we should never doubt ourselves because we think that when we face certain things and 
things are not going our way, we always tend to say, listen, we're not going to do it, let's give up now. And I think I really showed that giving up is not the option. So you just need to really push through whatever you're going through. Sometimes it may not be the result that you wanted, but there's always something that you can gain from it. So. Yeah. Okay, so can I be a little personal now? It seems the South African authorities are not happy that you're representing Nigeria and they're taking it out of the, um, your family for it already. And the fact that their own um, contestants <laughs> dropped out at the point, what do you think mm -hmm. of all of this? I don't even know. I just feel like people just making this whole thing a big deal. Um, and it's actually really sad to see because most of the times people don't understand the ripple effect that this thing can have on people. A lot of the times people would say certain things about the Miss South Africa contestant Mia or something about me or compare us. And it, most times these kind of things cause conflict amongst beauty queens as well. But I'm really glad that it never had anything um, on us, we were actually really cool with each other to a point where people kept on telling us, you guys are not cool with each other because you're not taking pictures. And we were like, we are so many. Like, how do you expect us, you know, to do all of this? But um, I don't think it was really that much of a big deal. So, okay, some young people are watching you right now, or they might be watching you. So, what do you think they are thinking, and what would be your advice to a lot of them who are looking up to becoming beauty queens? Ooh, beauty queen. Um, I said this before as well. I, I feel like all of us are different and we all move differently. For me, it's either I motivate myself, someone motivates me, or something else motivates me. So I feel like always have one of the three because maybe the two might not work, but the other one might work. So sometimes someone can actually motivate you, but it might not work. Sometimes you might try to motivate yourself, but it might not work. But maybe that one little thing from outside can actually get you to a point where you're like, listen, I can do it. And for me, it was a quote that says, the question is not who's going to let me, it's who's going to stop me. The moment I saw this quote, I felt so connected with it. And I literally feel like I went with this quote with me to Mexico because even when I went to Mexico there was still a petition for me not to walk the Miss Universe stage and I actually felt like my life was ending. I was like, oh God, this cannot work out again. But that quote was like ringing in my head and was like, nobody's going to stop you. You just need to show it. Final question, sorry. Um, at, at, at this point, what's next for you? So what's next for me is obviously not pageantry. Uh, like I said before, I am done with pageants. I feel like I really did well. I made myself proud. I made Nigeria proud, and that's really what I wanted. But moving forward, it's just for me to finish my education. I am a law student in my final year. So I would like to graduate and obviously pursue that as well. And also seek other potentials as well that I have within myself that I haven't yet discovered. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.